In the last set of PowerPoints, we introduced the concept of enthalpy as a measure of heat lost or gained by a chemical system. Enthalpies have been measured and referenced for a wide variety of different reactions. And these enthalpies, which are known as standard enthalpies, are available for calculations and for applying to heat exchange in other reactions. There are a few conventions regarding these standard enthalpies and their use that we'll discuss in this PowerPoint. One of the most common sets of reference enthalpies are known as standard enthalpies of formation. They're designated with a lowercase f written as a subscript on the enthalpy symbol. You'll often usually see these with a degree sign on the enthalpy symbol as well. And that degree sign indicates standard thermochemical conditions. And we'll talk about what those are in just a minute. So enthalpies of formation represent the heat required or released for the formation of one mole of a compound from its constituent elements. Let's look at a few examples of these types of thermochemical reactions. So notice that the reaction is always written with the compound formed as the only product. While the reactants are always the elements that must be combined to make that compound. So carbon dioxide is formed from carbon and oxygen and nitrogen dioxide from nitrogen and oxygen. Now by convention, these equations are always balanced so that there is a one coefficient on the final product. And this might mean that you'll need a fractional coefficient on one or more of the reactant elements to make the equation balance. As in this second example here. We only need one nitrogen in our final molecule of nitrogen dioxide, but as an element, nitrogen comes in diatomic molecules. So we have to put a fractional coefficient of one half in front of that diatomic nitrogen. So the elements listed are also always given in their most common or stable elemental form. So if an element usually is found in its elemental form as a diatomic molecule, it's included in the equation as a diatomic. So nitrogen and oxygen are N2 and O2. Carbon is most stable in its solid form, graphite to be more specific. So that's how it's listed as an element here. So by convention, these enthalpies are presented at standard conditions. And thermochemical standard conditions are 298 Kelvin, which is 25 degrees Celsius, and one atmosphere of pressure. So this is different than the standard conditions we use for gases and using the ideal gas law. The other component of standard state is that reactants are always present in their most stable pure elemental form. If the reaction does occur at different condi conditions, then the enthalpies will be different. Now, there are ways you can calculate enthalpies at non-standard conditions, but that's a topic for the second semester of general chemistry. For right now, we're just going to deal with the most common standard conditions found in reference lists of enthalpies. And the most convenient reference lists of these enthalpy values for this class can be found in Appendix G of your textbook. You'll find there a large list of thermodynamic standard values, including enthalpies of formation for a long list of different substances. And it's important to note that you won't see the thermochemical equations for the formation of these compounds in the appendix. Only the enthalpy of formation will be listed. It's assumed that you can write the standard formation equation using the conventions listed above. So let's look at how you would do this. So one of those reference tables is found in Appendix G of your textbook. If you were to look up 
the enthalpy of formation of any particular compound in appendix G, what you would find is the formula for that compound and the enthalpy associated with it. So for example, if we looked up the enthalpy of formation for liquid ethanol, C2H5OH, we'd find its formula as well as the enthalpy negative 277.6 kilojoules for the formation of ethanol. You would not find the formation equation associated with uh, the formation reaction for ethanol. And this is because it's assumed that you can write this for yourself knowing that the formation equation always takes the same form. It's the compound that you're making as a product and um, and on the left the elements that are found as part of that compound in their most stable form at 25 degrees celsius in one atmosphere so let's go through the process of writing the reaction equation for the formation of ethanol so we would know that ethanol is going to be on the right, on the product side, and we simply break it up into the different elements that are found in that formula on the reactant side, on the left. So that's carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. We'd also know that carbon at 25 degrees Celsius in one atmosphere is most common in the solid form. Hydrogen and oxygen are most common as gases, and those gases are diatomic molecules, H2 and O2. So that's how we write them in our formation equation. The last thing we need to do is actually balance this equation. And remember that the convention is always that we have a one coefficient on our final product. So we simply need to balance in order to maintain a one coefficient. So in our atom inventory, um, this represents the actual number of atoms that are present before we add any coefficients. Just remember that these numbers on the right are going to stay as they are. And we're going to put coefficients on the left only in order to get the same number as what we have on the right. And if this means we have to put a fractional coefficient on the left, then we'll put a fractional coefficient. So let's start with carbon. I have two in my final product, so I put a two coefficient in front of solid carbon. Hydrogen, I have six total on the product, so I put a three coefficient in front of my H2. And oxygen, I only need one of, since I only have one in the final product, so I put a one-half coefficient in front of my O2. And now everything is balanced. Let's look at another example. This time we look up the enthalpy of formation of solid ammonium nitrate, NH4NO3, in Appendix G. And we find that uh, 365.56 kilojoules of heat are released whenever this compound is formed. We won't find the reaction equation for the formation of ammonium nitrate from its elements, so we do have to write that. Again, we're going to follow the standard formation equation format, elements on the left, final compound on the right. And for ammonium nitrate, it's made up of nitrogen, hydrogen, and oxygen. Each of these are uh, most stable as gases at 25 degrees Celsius in one atmosphere, and they're all diatomic gases. So it's N2, H2, and O2. Now we want to balance these. So remember that uh, we're going to keep the numbers here on the right because we're going to balance everything to keep a one coefficient in front of our final product. So if we have to add fractional coefficients in front of our reactants, we will. Nitrogen is already balanced at two and two on each side. We'll start then with hydrogen and put a two coefficient in front of the H2 formula to give us four hydrogens on the reactant side. 
And next we want to do oxygen. In order to get three oxygens on the reactant side, we simply have to multiply by three halves. And now our formation equation is balanced. Another type of standard enthalpy that you might encounter is known as the standard enthalpy of combustion. These are denoted with a subscript C on the enthalpy formula indicating combustion. The degree sign represents standard conditions, 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere pressure. You can find a selection of these standard reference values listed in Chapter 5 of your textbook in Table 5.2. And this is on page 260 of the print and PDF versions of the text. So there are some conventions with the equations associated with these standard enthalpies as well. These equations are always combustion reactions, so it's a substance that's combining with oxygen to produce the oxides as products. So if you're dealing with a carbon and hydrogen substance that's combining, it produces carbon dioxide and water as the most common oxide of hydrogen. If there's no hydrogen present, as in the carbon monoxide example given here, we only produce the oxide of carbon, carbon dioxide. The other major convention associated with these is that they are always balanced so that there is a one coefficient on the substance that's actually reacting with oxygen or on the substances being combusted. So in methane, carbon monoxide, and in this case, isooctane in these examples. Everything else in that equation is balanced with coefficients to maintain that one coefficient in front of the substance combusted. And if this means that we have to use fractional coefficients to maintain that, as we do in the equations for both carbon monoxide and isooctane, then we use fractional coefficients. And this allows us to report the enthalpy of combustion values in units of kilojoules per mole of substance combusted. So in summary, standard enthalpies of formation and combustion are examples of reference enthalpies that can ultimately be used to calculate the enthalpies of other processes. And we'll discuss this in our next PowerPoint on Hess's Law. And standard reference enthalpies always represent the heat exchanged when the reaction occurs at standard thermodynamic conditions of 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere pressure.